Whether you've been gone a couple months, a year, three years, Clash of Clans is constantly being updated and when you step away for a bit and return later, it might feel like you missed a ton. Where do you start? The amount of videos you need to watch to catch up. If only there was one guide that explains all of the biggest features added the last three or so years. Well. Now there is. In this video, I plan to highlight some of the biggest changes in Clash of Clans that you definitely need to know about. Not everything, but just the most important bits, as some things are better discovered by the player. Maybe this will save you some time from having to Google everything because the game doesn't quite explain some things. Depending on how long you've been away can really change what you want to know about, so I've included chapters you can skip between in case you want to jump right into a specific topic. And lastly, I know this isn't the typical video for my existing viewers, but if you want to stick around anyways, I hope you all enjoy. Let's do this. Back in the day, if you quit playing for a while and came back, you just continue where you left off. But ever since 2021, if you've been inactive for more than 90 days, your base will start upgrading itself. Huh. So it all starts with logging in, the villager confuses you for an enemy, you put up a fight by attacking your own base, and after the villager realizes it's you, holy sh**, she updates you on what the builders have been up to since you left, and what the wizards have been upgrading in the laboratory. After all that, you're left with a village boost that lasts for a few days, which boosts a number of things. Overall, pretty warm welcome back into the game. Spells are a fundamental part of an army, but if it's been a minute, you should know that some spells have been reworked and don't exactly work the same way they previously did. For example, if you remember the lightning spell, it used to be two housing space and hit multiple spots, but in 2020, the housing space was cut in half and it now works like the zap in Clash Royale where it only hits one area once. So next time you're brewing some spells, check to see if a spell you used to use has changed. Surely you've noticed some weird looking bases when looking for a base to attack. Not necessarily weird, but it looks off. Well, that's thanks to a new feature added in 2020, sceneries. It basically changes the setting of your base, so you could be in a jungle, a mountain, even Clash Royale. <laughs> now, the way you obtain these are from the shop when they do appear, and every now and then you'll get one for free in a challenge or something, and also at Town Hall 14 and 15, you get one for free by just being there. Unfortunately, sceneries are usually time exclusive, but luckily for returning players, they recently added a scenery tab in the shop to buy some of the older sceneries. Over time, they'll be adding more and more as the time exclusive ones become old enough. Honestly, sceneries are one of my favorite things that has come to Clash of Clans. After playing for years, a change in scenery is very, very nice. Depending on when you last played, the builder base is, well, exactly how it always been. But if you've never maxed the builder base or never tried, you might find it helpful to know that this is where you get the six builder. Instead of buying it like the other five, at Builder Hall 9, you get a building called the Auto Hut. You need to upgrade this hut by doing various tasks in the game, and every upgrade is free, so no resources and no waiting. When you finally get it to level five, you essentially get a second builder for the builder base but you can choose to send it to the home village where it becomes the sixth builder. You can always send it back and forth depending on where you need that builder. Back in the day, it was possible to keep upgrading a town hall all the way without worrying about the buildings and walls associated with it. I'm sure a lot of you remember those bases with no walls or missing 99% of the buildings. Unfortunately, after it was abused for clan wars, there were requirements put in place. So now you have to build everything that town hall unlocks to move on, no matter what town hall you're at. There's still bases out there that don't have these buildings needed, but obviously those are older accounts. So keep in mind next time you plan on moving on or creating a new account. If you come back as a town hall 11 or hired, you might have noticed some barrel looking building in the outskirts of the village. That is a super sauna along the town hall 11, which is essentially a new barracks that trains super versions of their regular counterparts. You can read their descriptions and even try them out for free. And if you're looking for a start, people usually love to farm with sneaky goblins. Just find death bases and farm like the good old days. All of them do cost Dark Elixir, but last for three days, so I think it's a pretty sweet deal. But you can also use the Super Potion, which activates any super troop you want for the same duration without having to spend the Dark Elixir. Now, keep in mind that every super troop takes up more housing space than their regular version, so plan accordingly. Okay, let's face it, most of the graphics in the game look exactly the same, but one thing you'll want to make sure to check out is the new higher frame rate option available for phones who can display higher than 60. By default, it's toggled off, but simply go to the settings, more settings, and flick it on. And you know what they say, once you go 120, you can't go back. 
I don't know if anyone actually says that. Moving on. Long gone are the days of worrying if your army was using too much Dark Elixir because troops are now 100% free and you might have noticed this in the barracks. Instead of displaying the cost, it now tells you the housing space. This applies for spells and siege machines as well. Speaking of troops though, you now only have one barracks each. No more duplicates. One of the greatest changes recently was the ability to upgrade troops while the lab itself is upgrading. This applies to the Star Laboratory and the Penthouse, and boy is it as helpful as it sounds. I wish this was a thing years ago, but it took a little while for Supercell to fold on this one. The Trader has been an awesome addition to the game, but recently after years it was reworked and it works a little differently. Instead of three items that reset daily, the shop now resets every week. Because of that, there are now way more options to choose from and a free item pops up in the top left every week. There's also a second tab that uses raid medals instead of gems, which you can get from participating in raids on the weekend for the clan capital. Speaking of the clan capital, it is a new feature that you can access by clicking the airship next to the builder base. It's basically a clan village. These are all your districts. You can click on every one of them and your clan works together to upgrade them and make them stronger in time for clan raids, which happens in the weekend. During clan raids, you attack other clans with troops specific to this game mode, and you have a few tries to get as much percent as you can. In doing so, you earn capital gold, which allows to help upgrade stuff in any of the districts. At the end of the week, you get the results and you get raid medals, which you can spend at the trader shop. And finally, there's a forge to get more capital gold in case you have some extra resources laying around. There's a lot to learn and explain, but that pretty much sums it up. I'm just trying to condense it into like a minute. You definitely want to participate as there's a lot in it for every player. Pets. You've probably heard of it, but if you're wondering what they are, it's basically what it sounds like. At Town Hall 14, you unlock the pet house that allows you to assign pets to heroes. Each of these pets having different abilities and they accompany your hero in every battle. Now you only start with one pet, but as you upgrade the pet house, you start to unlock more and more of them. It's a pretty neat feature and can definitely change the way you do your attacks. It's hard to ignore the existence of these new magic items. So many books, potions, and weird objects. Magic items have changed the way we play Clash of Clans and they are incredibly useful. You basically get magic items in various ways the trader shop, season pass, so many places. And you can check to see if you have any in the town hall by clicking magic items. Here you can see all of them and what they do. For example, the training potion will boost the training times for an hour. Luckily, all of the descriptions are pretty easy to understand and tell you exactly what they do. Also, there are a few magic items that are very OP, but you can only obtain from the league shop using medals earned from Clan War Leagues. So what is Clan War Leagues? Well, it was added quite a long time ago. I'm sure a lot of you know what this is, so feel free to skip over this part. But in case you have no idea what that is, it is basically a week-long clan war with multiple clans. Once a month, clans participate in a week-long season, during which they fight other clans of similar skill level each day of the week. Now, there's not many differences besides you only get one attack and not two like traditional clan wars. At the end of the clan war league, depending on how your clan did, you climb leagues and get rewarded medals. Those medals you spend at the leak shop and get some pretty beefy magic items. These hammers pretty much finish an upgrade from start to finish, so you don't need to gather the resources and you don't need to wait. It's an instant upgrade. There's never been a better feature in Clash of Clans to get you started again than the practice mode. You might have already noticed it by clicking on attack and notice the third tab in there. Yeah, definitely worth checking out. Think of it as tutorials. Each level teaches you different armies and how to use them. The point of these practice attacks is to teach you new armies you can use in the game. And as a bonus, there's free loot, so why not? Now, they're all divided by Tell Hall, but they're all fun, so if you're looking to kill some time and learn armies, even if it doesn't apply to you, I'd do them all. Surely you've seen these massive machines rolling around, or flying, attacking and deploying troops. What in the goddamn f is that, am I right? Well, those are siege machines, which are special weapons created in the workshop unlocked at Tell Hall 12 that carry your clan castle troops. Each type of siege machine offers a unique method of transporting and deploying your troops during your attacks. So if you request a siege machine and troops, that siege machine will be full of troops. And when it gets destroyed or you manually destroy yourself, 
by clicking on it a second time, it'll deploy the troops. But they don't need troops to work. For example, you can train your own empty wall wrecker and use it like that. The only difference, it won't deploy troops, but it'll still wreck walls, you know what I mean? And despite unlocking the workshop at Town Hall 12, you don't need the workshop to use them. You can request it starting at Town Hall 10 in your clan castle. And lastly, Supercell ID. The past few years, there's been a major emphasis to sign up for it. For all good reasons. I'm sure you know what it's kind of about, it's pretty obvious. It's essentially an account manager for Supercell games, so instead of relying on Game Center or Google, which has always been a hassle, you can keep multiple bases in one account through Supercell ID. And if that doesn't sound like enough, they just started to roll out two-step fabrication, so it's super secure. For anyone returning, I highly advise you to make a Supercell ID so you never lose your account, and it's just super convenient. So guys, that's pretty much all I thought was worth mentioning. I tried not to mention things that were added ages ago, like way too old, like Clan Wars, for example. I'm sure everyone and their mama knows about Clan Wars by now. And if you haven't heard about it, well, <laughs> you got a lot to learn. Anyways, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I know it's not the typical content my subscribers would expect, but I hope I can help someone out there looking to return to the game. So please like, comment, and subscribe, and as always, Thanks for watching. Have a gaming out. Peace.